death of the author is essentially the argument that a form of media should be judged by its own merits, independent of what the creator says of it. At least, that's a modern understanding of it. The origins of the phrase lie in the grimdark world of 1967. A French got his eight-page manifesto published in a magazine. He used big words like intransitively and capitalist ideology, but from my fifth grade reading level, I understand it like this. Up until a few hundred years ago, long-distance communication was much more difficult, so the interpretation of any story was left to the reader by necessity. With more access to information, art began to be judged in relation to its creator. Whatever their interpretation was became the correct interpretation. Barthes argues that this hurts the work and how we view it. Quote, the birth of the reader must be at the cost of the death of the author, end quote. That original meaning has held true, but with the popularity of the internet, authors can give input and make changes on a dime. Before, people could judge and interpret a Van Gogh painting based off what they know of the man. Now, J.K. Rowling can boot up the demon box and expose Dumbledore's pussy mileage to millions. Through interviews and Twitter, writers are able to not only give their interpretations and intent, but actively add or change to their works meaning a consumer of their story won't have the full story until they learn every change the writer made online, and that story will be out of date as soon as they make another change. The argument for death of the author is to keep the official works and additional statements separate. A couple examples. Rebel Moon's wiki is a collection of lore and characters. Until the official novelization was released, the majority of the lore and world building didn't come from the film itself, but from interviews. The guns were laser plasma things that had no explanation, but the interviews revealed them to be slag weapons that shoot molten metal, until another interview revealed them to actually be lava corks. Rebel Moon is a very empty film, to the point that the genuinely good people behind the wiki were reliant on outside material to explain the film. Now for a good film hurt by the writer's comments. The Suicide Squad had a character abused and experimented on by his mother trying to make him a superhero. He did receive powers, but they were more curse and blessing, and he killed his mother. Now he's depressed and broken, awkward and lonely. He sees his mother's face on everyone. Through the movie, he becomes closer to the team and starts coming out of his shell. In his final scene, it's him exclaiming that he's a superhero after severely wounded the big monster that looks like his mother just before he gets killed by it. A full character arc that made the polka dot power guy a tragic character that we can empathize and root for. Then James Gunn came out and said that he's a manipulative narcissist. That doesn't fit with what we're shown and actively hurts the character. Those examples come from more or less isolated films. Applying Death of the Author to an IP of many works gets a little more complicated. For franchises like Star Wars or Fallout, I tend to lean on whatever works the IP holder declares are canon, because those are the completed stories they're working with. But interviews on Twitter rambles shouldn't count as canon works in the IP, Otherwise, you run into the earlier problems. Now, this wasn't bait. I'm going to talk about Fallout now. When did Shady Sands get nuked? The show gives us three indicators. Starting with the weakest, during the episode 5 credit scene, we're shown a ruined school with a book still in a locker with a checkout date of 2276. This tells us that the school was abandoned in 2277. Either a complete collapse of the government education system or a nuke went off in 2277, but it's unclear, and it is only a credit slide. The chalkboard in Vault 4 tells us Shady Sands fell in 2277 with an arrow pointing towards Mushroom Cloud. The nuke is arguably the most important event and wasn't giving a date, implying it coincided with the fall of Shady Sands, but that's just an implication. The last indicator is rock solid, though. We know Lucy's mom left the vault in the same time period that Shady Sands got nuked. We know Lucy and Norm were told the mom died. So if we get a date for her death, we get a date for the nuke. Episode 4, the ghoul is getting groceries, and Lucy says her mother died in the Great Plague of 77. A great plague that killed your mother is not something you forget the date of. The vault had no reason to lie about the year, even if they could, which they couldn't. The show tells us the nuke was in 2277, by little implications, character ages, and definitively by the plague date. The only evidence against this date are the comments from the creators in interviews and on social media. So should we ignore these statements? Well, yes, but also no. Death of the author isn't a law or rule. I've seen it described as a theory or even a fallacy. It's a way to interpret or critique media. One that I prescribe to is I believe a piece of media should stand on its own. A person that only has access to a movie shouldn't need to watch hours of interviews and read all the tweets to properly consume the product. 
the quality of the film shouldn't be in flux as a writer can jump onto Twitter at any time to change things. But even with using Death of the Author, there's still something again from these writers' statements. Entertainment, for one. Emil accidentally saying the Fallout 4 protagonist is a war criminal is just plain funny. What we can take from the statements that Shady Sands was nuked after Fallout New Vegas are theories on intent. The show is too consistent on 2277 for it to be a mistake. The denial in interviews appears to be backpedaling from backlash. So we can expect Season 2 to change the date to 2282, which will remove the damage done to Fallout New Vegas at the cost of making those in-game decisions lose their impact and adding another show contradiction to the pile. This outside information is useful to the meta, the discussion around the media, answering the why instead of the what. Starfield feels disconnected. Why? No central design document. Rebel Moon characters don't have arcs. Why? The script was split between three writers. Watchmen was a very faithful adaptation of the comic. Why? The scriptwriter went to the original creator. I don't know how to end this video. Drink water.